Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to Elm Creek. We've moved forward a day from where we left off last time and uh, I have accelerated to try and get these a little bit closer to finished. However, they've still got over 1100 litres of water in each of them. Uh, they are still running, so we are still using it up. I think we used about 600 litres over the past uh, 16 or 17 hours, so probably another two days from running out of water in these, which is uh, quite a while. Now, we are on the updated version of Farming Simulator, version 1.2. And with that came the changes to the pallets. So you'll see here our lettuces. These ones we can still pick up. They are only 200 kilos, which is what the capacity of them was before. Now, they don't look too bad. If you come around the corner, take a look at our tomato pallets. The increased capacity has changed these. So there's 130 kilos or uh, 100 litres of tomatoes I think when, when it's finished is 600 litres someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that but I think it's 600 litres in total so we're left with those uh, those funny little pallets which is alright we can handle those uh, if I was to probably move one of these out of the way let's just test that we'll grab that move it out of the way another one will spawn in its place or not there we go and uh, if we go and look at that one that one is 500 litres and too heavy to be picked up. Stand next to it. Shows the hand symbol, but I can't pick it up. So, 500 litres, 400 kilos versus 100 litres there. So, five times the capacity does force us into using our pallet forks, though, to load it, which I don't mind. I don't mind doing a little bit of a loading and the way I have been enjoying the loading physics with uh, 22 so far. I'm not too disappointed about that does make it a little bit difficult with the lettuces here but the pallet forks we have and adjust the width on uh, in fact I'm not sure if we've got enough to grab another one and it looks like like we might have the jinxed pallets there that are stuck in that or are they too heavy to pick up give that a go actually I might just test that because I know some people were having issues with their pallets getting stuck so we'll just uh, squeeze around here and see if we can move one of these or not we can adjust the spacing there, you can see the pallet forks, all the prongs on the pallet fork at the front moving. So if we just get turned around here, uh, we can move it, which is a good sign. Hopefully, in a right, the right angle. Here we are, they aren't too heavy to lift up. However, they must do, they have a trigger, they have a collision up high, they do. So we're back to the old FS19 pallets, just for the meantime. So, uh, that's alright, we'll just move this one out of the way. This is not accepted here. I'm aware of that, I'm just moving it and stacking it. Alright, we'll just leave that one out of the way and uh, we'll come and get the rest at another time. But with 1100 litres of water to do our test properly, we're going to have to leave those two run for a little bit longer. So, onwards, what else we have to do today? We're going to go and grab a grass roller. Uh, one of the meadow rollers and roll all our grass fields with that a go see how it all works out make sure it does what we expect it to do once we've done that i think we might put the subsoiler on the back and go and deal to that field we had the soybeans in get that all turned over and uh, that will give us a chance to have a play around with the rock mechanics again and uh, we will make sure do something to deal with the rocks get them picked up and uh, removed or at least rolled in before we plant because that as a lot of people have pointed out was the main issue that I had last time so we'll get down to the shop and see what roller we're going to grab all right we're just down here at the shop bring it up the menu so you to do it here let's just take a quick look make sure there's nothing here on special that we could use actually that fertilizer spreader did we buy one does this one take lime and fertilizer uh, it is just a fertilizer spreader, unfortunately. If that one took lime, that would have been a great purchase. $8,000, 68% off. Fantastic deal. Uh, but probably not quite worth it at the moment because we are going to need something that spreads lime. So we have to keep an eye out for something there. If we come over here, we're going to take a look at our rolling options. I wanted to have a look under grassland care. Pretty sure we were going to take a look at this max roller. 6.3 meters wide. I'll say 5.6 but that's how much it weighs uh, and you can see there we can actually put 
seed in it, so we must be able to seed with this. Uh, but there we can see that we take care of our grass and also our oil seed radish. Uh, of course, that's what it can plant, what it takes care of. So we'll just have a look here. Here are our options, configurations there. Just rotate around. So we could put a seed on the back for three and a half thousand dollars. Obviously, we don't necessarily need that. Although, if we were to buy it, it would be a much quicker way to seed our grass when we do do the uh, infill. But I think we don't need it for seeding grass now. I'm not going to put seed it, grass into the soybean field either. Too far down uh, towards next planting season for that. So let's just uh, we'll stay there with that. We can obviously add it on later. And uh, let's just come up with a clever number plate as I like to do. And there we go. I've gone with Flat Earth for this one. Now, ironically, I am actually have a stream of a rocket launch going on on my other screen while I'm recording this. So it made me laugh. I did see a comment in the chat that was on that, something about Flat Earthers. So I thought, there we go. We're rolling. We're rolling the Earth about the only time you will ever come across a flat earther around me at least. So $26,000, got 38 in the bank. Go ahead and buy that. But we do have a lot of crop in the, the uh, in storage to pull out later on once we're uh, once we hit the optimum time to sell that, which is getting close to the week actually. I was checking that just before. Here we are, we'll get that hooked up and let's run on down and test this out on our big grass field see if it makes a difference there wasn't a car coming when I pulled out we'll see if it makes a difference to the fertilizer or the yield state there on that uh, field we'll see you down there we're just gonna pull straight into the field here uh, we will get this unfolded now it's gonna pop down beat the train too because we rolled this area and this is something that I've added in on the recent update you can see there under soil composition there is a lot more information than there used to be we can see all individual rocks you know look at field 53 there you can see around the outside of this field where we plowed the rocks 75 obviously our fields down there too have a lot of different stones and it d displays the different sizes so obviously yellow being assuming the smaller orange being the middle size and red being the largest so uh, if we just zoom in there looks to me like we've got a lot of orange there also shows where it needs rolling. So we uh, obviously didn't roll, or we did roll. We rolled around the perimeter, and we did a strip through the middle and a strip through the bottom of this one, just to see what would happen. And uh, we didn't think anything was helping. But as you've all pointed out, we were mistaken. Now, what I'm going to be intrigued with, with this roller is whether it takes off that needs rolling state, this blue one, or whether it adds a fertilizer state. Because the way I'd interpreted it for grassland was that it added a fertilizer state to it. So if that's the case, we should see this going from a light blue there to the dark blue of the fertilizer. Now the fertilizer we have on this, if you recall, because we plowed these fields up uh, around the edge and increased the size of them, that is why these are blue. See the little blue strips through there, which were just the uh, pieces that interlinked between the fields, which we plowed up too. So, Let's get this all unfolded and see what happens. Alright, so that's unfolded. We'll just back up here to the edge of the field. Now we should be able to lower that down. Get it rolled around and we're now on the flat earth and that was what I was a little bit worried about. It looks like it must reset the growth on our grass. We are getting a bigger yield bonus, 92%, fertilized 84%, whereas over here we're 70, 50. It does look like it sets it back a growth stage, which is interesting. I guess that makes sense a little bit. Now if we just take a look in here, we're going to see if we can see change in colour for the growth state. It's a bit hard to tell because of where I'm flashing. I think it's flashing a lighter green colour, but uh, let's drive along a little bit further and see how that changes. We'll just stop there and take another look. And there you go. You can see we have set back a growth stage, uh, which is interesting. So I guess there's a little bit of a trade-off, if you don't understand. 25% yield bonus, 50% fertilized. 
we go up to a higher yield bonus, 100% fertilized there and almost 100% yield bonus. So the other thing to check, what do we see here on this? And we do see that dark blue. Uh, obviously we can't get into the light blue. I might just do a quick little strip across there just to test and see what happens. It does take away that rolled state because if we can kill two birds with one stone, lots of stones, then uh, it would be worth doing. Carrying on for that one loss of uh, growth stage. And there we have, we do not get the rolling bonus for this. So we would have had to carry on using the other roller. The one, we'll just have a look here under these rollers. So to have managed to get the biggest benefit, we would have had to roll straight after planting with this roller here. All right, well, I think for the yield bonus and everything like that, let's carry on and get this done. Uh, we've bought the machine. It does set us back a day or two with the grass growth for a um, bit of a month, but uh, I think it is going to pay off in the long run. And of course, we don't have to plant straight away. We uh, do have a bit of a window there for planting the crops that we're going to put into these fields. So, let's crack on with this and uh, we'll get this done as quickly as possible. We'll just throw it onto a time lapse and probably touch base when we've finished in the other fields and getting ready to go and run the subsoiler through the soybean field over there. We'll see you soon. Almost got the last little piece there finished, we'll turn around and pick up that little bit we did miss. And then we'll be finished in this field, so we'll uh, pop up the mini map, or the main map sorry, in a second, and just take a look at where we're sitting now with uh, the state of this field. Because obviously we have reverted a little bit, so we'll get that lifted up and start folding it up, and then we'll uh, take a look at that. There we go, we can see we have got the dark blue where we plowed the grass and turn off the right one, turn off the rolling and we've got the light blue across the rest. So we still do need to put some fertilizer on some areas where we hadn't plowed but it has 
boosted that uh, productivity there. So I'm just actually going to jump out here and take a quick look. But down here, for example, 73% yield bonus, obviously only 50% fertilized. So we're getting more of a yield bonus if we uh, get that extra little bit of fertilizer on here. For example, over here on the edge, where I know it's pretty well fertilized, 100% fertilized, we're at a 98% yield bonus. Not quite sure what sort of penalty if there is one for the rocks. I don't think there is. I think they just eventually cause accelerated damage to your equipment. So that's uh, it's good to get that all finished off. Looks like we've got a bit of a golf course now with this uh, green carpet. But we'll uh, just head on down to the yard and take care of the uh, small pastures down there. And that will be just about them all done until we need to mow them. Uh, just do need to try and get some fertilizer on them at some stage. And if we just pull in here, we'll be able to get the roller unro unfolded, rolled unfolded again. And we'll quickly get this field done. I won't bother putting a time lapse or anything on this. Uh, you've probably seen enough, so we'll just uh, we'll get this done and catch up with you when it is all finished. And our last little piece in the fields here by the yard, and we uh, will be all done. So that has gone very smoothly. Just uh, all the rocks we had to deal with, which doesn't make it look that attractive. We'll just get a uh, spin around here and get this lifted up and folded up. Find somewhere else like this in the yard. We're uh, running out of space. Now the other thing I did like, they have added function. I'm just going to bring up the build menu. So if you go into the build menu and hit demolish, you can go and actually get rid of these buildings that you start out with. Uh, it demolishes the shed, the house, the silo, the barn over there, and the little roof. Which is kind of nice. It would be nice if it was done individually because you know I don't mind the house staying there but this shed to go would have been actually quite nice to be able to use that area uh, I don't mind that little shed staying so great that they've added that in uh, just a little bit more flexibility see this shed here is individual uh, but they're all pieced together so close very close giants and fantastic that you have added this in you've listened to the community and uh, that's that's nice but let's just try and make it a little bit more flexible a little bit more uh discretion as to what it is you're going to demolish can't forget to give it the obligatory wash off before we go and pack it up and make sure it's nice and clean let me just leave the roller there we'll come straight over here pick up the subsoiler because uh, we're going to head down to the big soybean field and get that all ripped up ready to be planted into we'll uh, get down there and make a start on that Alright, so we've just pulled in over here to this field. We're going to make a start here on the subsoiling. This lowered down. And head on our way. Now I did say we were going to increase the size of this field. Uh, particularly down in this bottom end. Uh, why did my cruise control not go on? There we go. Down, uh, down there in the dip, there's quite a bit of land. I think our land goes all the way out to the road. We noticed when we were... Uh, when we were harvesting. Now a little disclaimer, if my voice does sound different for this part of the video, uh, I've recorded it in two parts and I'm actually doing this recording from a slightly different location. So there might be a little bit of a different echo or uh, it might just sound a little bit different. You're wondering why? That is why. Anyhow, this is all going pretty well. I'm getting lots of rocks and we are not going to make the same mistake we made with the field just over there and leave the rocks in. We'll uh, make sure we get those picked up before we get planted. Of course, we're not going to plant this field until we're ready to put a crop into it anyhow. So uh, we will just leave it sitting here. We'll obviously have to get some lime on it at some stage. And uh, get that all dealt with. But there we go. I've turned create fields on. We are just going to head on down the hill here. Run out towards the road. And get all this bit here added in as well. Make the most of the land we own. So we managed to cut down next to the road and now just as we go around more of the field here we're going to get as close as we can here to these trees and bushes. In fact we're going to take some of them out which is good. But in my experience, we did it on the last field, this is going to add a considerable area to our field. I must be getting a bit too close there to what we own. It's not letting me do that. There we go. Let's just, uh, just take a quick look here at the map. Down here at the bottom. Ah, uh, yes. 
right on the edge of it. I probably just need to run a straight line from here to the edge of the field. And then I need to see how much we can add beyond it. Almost in line with that road down there. So we'll just head down here and hang a little bit of a right in a second. And should be able to run a parallel line right about there I reckon. Maybe it could have gone a little bit further, but uh, we'll play it safe and head back down this way. But as you can have a look back, you can see we've added quite a bit of land to the field, and you can even see it when we come in here. It is going to make it considerably bigger, which is nice. Now I could actually cut down those trees, because I think when we looked last time, the uh, or looked earlier at least, the field edge actually goes, or that, the owned edge, goes all the way to that side of that road. Uh, but for now, I think we'll leave that little bit of grass. Can we run a little bit further along there? I think we'll leave it. We could come back and cut that tree down, uh, and maybe we'll do that next time. But for now, let's just head along here. And start ploughing or subsoiling this field properly. Oh, we are making it a little bit wider. I'm going to sneak a little bit there. So there we are, once around the field, defining our new field edges. However, I have changed my mind. As we were going along there, there's actually quite a bit of space in between the trees. So, I figured instead of cutting the trees down, we could at least come in here a bit of, on a bit of an angle. Head on over till we get a little bit closer to the edge of the road. Think about there we'll do. We've got that pole to contend with up here as well. And we can reclaim this bit of field and at least make ourselves a little bit more land not the full area we could have done if we cut the trees down, but uh, we might go around this tree here and uh, do the same on the other side of it. And even if that's a header width, that might be an extra thousand bushels, or a thousand litres, sorry, of whichever crop we are harvesting in, uh, in this field. I'll just turn out there. I think just a nice gentle arc back in here and get lined up again to about where we were let's say we were about that far across and there we go that has effectively given us two more passes in this field which is uh which is going to be good on top of all that other space that we've added around it all right well with our field edges now pretty much defined let's carry on we'll get everything uh some sort up and we'll see what the time's doing and whether we're going to have time to go and grab hold of a roller and see if we can deal to these rocks once and for all because uh, we didn't do it properly last time. I'm going to carry on here for a bit and we'll see you when we're all done. It feels like I haven't got very far and uh, I suddenly remembered how big this field is. We've done about three or four headland passes on each end We've got rid of all the grass area over on the far side there, so we're now just back down to the original field and working our way across there. But uh, we are only just starting, and this might take a bit longer than I had thought. So, uh, like I said, just touching base. We'll uh, keep going and catch you again when it is finished. Uh, but we'll see. We might not have too much sunlight left to be able to do anything else at this rate. Progress report. October 2nd, 3.54pm. Time feels like it's flying past three times faster than normal. We're over halfway across the field, but the sun is setting, the shadows are getting longer, the tractor's running out of diesel, the equipment's getting damaged. I'm not sure if we're going to make it across there. We don't have too much more to go, but it has been a slog. We're going to stick with it, we're going to persevere, and we're going to see it through. Argsy out. Tell you what, for a moment there I didn't know if we were going to make this. Look at the sun, look at how low and long those shadows are getting. It's starting to get dark. This is 10 past 5 but we are almost finished. Not going to lie, it has been a struggle and I've never been yawning in real life doing this but we are there. We've got it done. So we'll just get uh, turned around here, run back down this last little strip and we'll be able to call it quits on this field for today. 
certainly run out of time to get back here to do anything else but it is going to need some lime applied and it is obviously going to need a roll to clear out as many of these uh, rocks as we can even with the light it's getting hard to spot them but there is a lot across here so that will certainly be a priority for us uh, to make sure that it's all ready for planting come spring when it will be planting time and almost counting down the last few feet here getting to the end of the row and knowing we're not going to be doing this anytime again soon here we are of course the main reason we're subsoiling is to clear that cloud state on the field so hopefully we won't be getting that again anytime soon obviously you have to be mindful of what crops we put in to avoid that and uh, then just make sure we maintain the quality of the ground uh, but next time we'll certainly be looking at getting a bigger cultivator uh, possibly even a larger plough or something like that but that will all depend on what track do we have if we still have this we are severely restricted by horsepower so that is what sets a lot of our demands there we are, we've uh, managed to get all our grass rolled, get that fertiliser state or rolled state on that and uh, we've got that field subsoiled. It's uh, very good to have it all done and out of the way. So I'm just going to run up here, we'll get this washed off and put away. But for me, we're going to uh, call it quits for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed that. Thank you as always for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.